Hey guys, Lizard Lee here for big update. <laughs> so uh, there will not be cross stitching in this video if you're not interested. Sorry, but I have really big news that's good and really big news that's bad. So if you want to know what's going on, I will I will start with the good news and it'll be at this time because. I want to start with the good news, and if you want to start with the bad news, go to this time, and and then you can go back to that time and learn about the good news. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. So, <laughs> good news. I'm engaged. DJ proposed last month. I said yes, obviously. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Um, we went to Hawaii, we had a really nice vacation, we went out to eat, I wore a really pretty dress, he looked gorgeous, we started walking back to our hotel and he was like, oh, do you want to go to the beach? And I was like, no, <laughs> I want to go back to our room. <laughs> the day before, we went to a, um, what is the word, uh, um, it wasn't a botanical garden, it was a, a preservation for like a botanical garden type of thing um it was it was basically a huge forest is what it was and we got chewed the heck up by mosquitoes and i'm allergic to mosquitoes but i did not scratch them david did it looked like he was allergic to mosquitoes by the end of it it was it's was not good so both of us were in pain so I was like, no, I don't want to walk on the beach in my, my, um, slip on slippers. I don't know what to call them. Slip on shoes. Like they're not sandals. They're just the, the slip ons like you'd see on, um, I think it's Cinderella before she's in her gown. You know, it's just slip ons. Like they don't have a lot of grip. They're not great for sand. And then my legs hurt. So I was like, I don't want to go to the beach. So we went back to our hotel room, I put my stuff away, I turned around and he was down on one knee and he was like, will you marry me? And I said, yes. And the ring is just, look at that. Like, it looks kind of purple in artificial light like this, but in sunlight, it is the most beautiful, perfect shade of blue. Oh my God. Like, it's an Alexandrite ring. So it's known for changing color based on the light on it. Oh, I love it so much. It's so, it's so perfect. Like, <laughs> I, I am that person that I told him, I was like, don't buy a ring without talking to me first. Cause there are some I've seen that I do not like, like I, I don't like diamonds. And obviously that's the most popular kind or an engagement ring of any kind or whatever. And so we were looking through, this band came up and another one that it, you know, it crisscrosses over the ring. And this one on their website had a sapphire for the stone. And the other band had an Alexandrite. And I told him, I was like, man, I really like this band. And I really like Alexandrite. I wish that's what they had. And so David, being the best person ever, was like, hey, could you guys do this band with an Alexandrite? And they said, of course. <laughs> um, I had a lot of people ask me if I knew he was going to propose when we were on our, vaca on our vacation. And no, I had like a little bit of an inkling just because the last time we went on our vacation, he was like, everybody's been asking me if I'm going to propose. And Liz, I have to tell you, I'm not going to propose. He didn't say that this time. <laughs> and I was kind of like, does the previous time he said it still stand? Or is it because he wants it to be a surprise? <laughs> like, I don't know. But I mean, I said yes. Like, I'm not stupid. I think I've already said that. Sorry. <laughs> oh God, is it time for the bad news? Do I have anything else to say with the good news? <laughs> well, I just finished a six 
day stay at the hospital, I have multiple sclerosis. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, I'll get there, I'll get there. do this again. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm good, I'm good. There are so, so many worse diagnoses I could have gotten over MS. But obviously it's still kind of scary, you know. I already have asthma, now I have multiple sclerosis. Um, I... Let's see, today's Sunday. I can't, I'm crying. I need to get this out. Ugh, my nose, I'm sorry. Oof, bloody nose. That's not good. Oh, I can breathe a little bit better. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> uh. Okay. Okay. I think I'm okay. So, I have multiple sclerosis. I should say that without a tissue in my face. I apologize. I have multiple sclerosis. And I haven't really been able to talk to a specialist about it yet. I've kind of just been Googling and learning from the doctors at the hospital. And, um... Basically, it's an autoimmune disease, or I need to say, I'm not a professional. I don't, I don't know. I've, I've known about this for less than a week. So if anything I say is wrong, please don't be mean to me about it. <laughs> I'm learning. This is new for me. Um, it's an autoimmune disease where my immune system is attacking my tissues. And currently, I've got two lesions on my tissue brain or the, the the tissue around my brain my brain is not under attack it's the tissue around my brain if that makes sense that's my understanding at least and i also have lesions on god i think it was my c4 through c7 of my spine i could be remembering wrong though i was in the hospital for six days you guys i and they woke me up every four hours to take my vitals and they did, gave me breathing treatments every six hours. They took blood every day at 4 a.m., which is 2 a.m., or excuse me, which is two hours earlier than I usually wake up. Like, I'm, I'm going to show you my bruises now. Um, so my first IV was here and they drew a lot of blood here. This was my third IV and it was infiltrated. So when they injected the saline, it did not go in my blood. It went into my skin. So that's what this huge bruise is. And this is three days after it happened. So it's actually, it looks way better than it did before. It was super painful. <laughs> I was just like, you know, I was laying there in the MRI machine. She's like, okay, I'm gonna inject the uh, saline. And I was like, oh, that hurts, that hurts. And she was like, what? And stopped immediately. And she was like, it's infiltrated. Like, she was really angry at my nurse. <laughs> oh, well. Um, this arm actually doesn't look as bad anymore, which is kind of nice. I had an IV here. I don't, yeah, you're not going to be able to see that. Oh, well, actually, no, you can. That's where my IV was. And I also had an IV. Oh, my gosh. You can't even see it. No, I'm lying. I'm looking in the wrong part of my arm <laughs> right here. That was the last IV I had. So I got four IVs. Three of them worked. <laughs> um, I, I was given steroids for five days to help 
not only with the lesions, but also with my asthma, because my asthma was acting up, you know, as it does, because that's my life. <laughs> um, I'm saying this completely out of order. I didn't plan this very well. I'm sorry. I got very emotional a minute ago. <clears throat> I should start from the beginning and make it less confusing. I woke up on Monday and the right side of my face from like here down, not including my eye, my eye did not ever feel weird, but my cheek, a little bit of my nose, my lip, and here, all of this was kind of numb, not fully numb. The, um, the way I explained it to everybody, the doctors, my loved ones, everybody, was when you go to the dentist and they're, they like, they just injected you with a is it Novocaine or the numbing stuff? I don't know what it's called. And you can still feel, but you can tell that it doesn't feel right. That's how the right side of my face felt. The left side, no issues, no problems, still feels fine. The right side of my face, even now, six days later, feels a little numb. It feels a little off. Um, and me, being me, did not say anything. I let David wake up, I let him leave and go to work, and I worked, he got home, and I was like, hey honey, you know, like, the right side of my face feels a little numb, my eyes are kind of wonky, I'm like, maybe I should go to the ER, and he was like, uh, yeah, we're going right now, <laughs> like, part of your face is numb, that's not, that's not good, <clears throat> so he put me in the car. We went to the ER. Oh my god, I'm going to start crying again. Why am I going to start crying again? I'm fine. We get there, and I check in, and I'm telling them all of my symptoms. And my symptoms started the Thursday prior to that Monday. Um, and it was, it was mostly my asthma. So Thursday, I used my albuterol once, which, normal, like, once isn't a problem. Friday... I used it three times, which is not normal for me. I don't, I don't use my inhaler very much. Saturday, I used it again, and I was like, I'm going to urgent care. Like, I, I haven't used my inhaler this much in, like, three months. And it's been three days. Like, that's, that's not good. So I went to urgent care Saturday morning, and... Uh, I was telling them, you know, I've had a fever for three and a half weeks, and it's a roaming fever. I don't know if I've told you guys this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I, I had a fever for for three weeks, where it was just, the highest I got was 101.3, and the lowest I got was, you know, like, 98.4. I like, it was, it would go from crazy to normal, to crazy to normal. And I couldn't track it. It happened throughout the entire day, at different times. It would get really bad and it would be fine so i was just like okay you know maybe i'm like getting over something i don't know every time i googled roaming fever it was just about babies i was like i'm not a baby this isn't helping me <laughs> um so yes i went to urgent care i told them i had a roaming fever and my asthma has been acting up so they gave me what prednisone steroids they put me on steroids <laughs> And uh, she was like, you know, take three a day for five days. If you're better, you're good. If not, come back. So I took those. And I was like, okay, you know, my asthma, it, it's better. My chest doesn't feel as tight anymore. I'm not having to use my inhaler <laughs> three times a day. Um, sen Sunday, I think was just a normal day. Monday was when I woke up. And I was like... I said my face kill, feels kind of numb. It's, that's kind of weird. But um, I, I had to do all of the tests, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and my face, every single time they had me do that, my face fully reacted. And that's kind of what I was expecting because my, my face was never fully numb in any spot. I could always feel it a little bit. Versus, you know... It, if I'd actually had a stroke or something, it probably would have been fully numb, and my smile would be more like, rather than this. I don't know. I, um, 
okay I've lost track where was I <laughs> um, I went in oh they were asking me why I came in and so I was like I was trying to tell them all of that and you know so I was telling them on Thursday my asthma acted up I went to urgent care on Saturday oh I got a negative COVID test <sighs> I have to fix that. I'm sorry. I, I, I've had three COVID tests done in the last week and all of them have come back negative. So it, it's not COVID for sure. Or if it is two hospitals or well, a CVS and a hospital have messed it up. Um, so it's not COVID. That was nice. Um, I've got like a hair on my nose. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a disaster. Um, so negative COVID test. Oh, so yeah, that's what I told her. I was like, you know, I, I, ha I took a COVID test at CVS on Thursday, came back negative Friday. I've been using my inhaler. I woke up this morning on Monday, 6 a.m. and my face felt a little numb. And the, the lady checking me in was kind of just like, okay, I don't care about the asthma. Tell me more about the numbness. And I was just like, oh, okay. Like, my main concern was my asthma. It wasn't the numbness. Because, you know, I'm an idiot and I've always had asthma. So asthma has always been one of the, the forefronts of my mind. Sorry, my bangs are still... I want to just kind of... Don't mind me. Don't mind me. There we go. I think I'm good. I think I got it. <laughs> um, so like my, the forethought in my mind was my asthma. It was not the numbness because I wasn't completely numb. So I don't know. It just didn't concern me as much as it probably should have. <laughs> but she focused on the, the right thing. And the she started saying code white. And I was just like, what's a code white like I am very white <laughs> I that was a joke actually in the moment I was just like oh who's a code white like what's a code white you know I wasn't saying anything I was just thinking that they brought me back they put me on a gurney they started talking to me immediately asking me all kinds of questions I answered everything I was fully conscious uh, I slurred my words the normal amount <laughs> because <laughs> I misspeak all the time <clears throat> and um, they had me do all the facial expressions um, they had me put my arms out in front of me and hold them there had me put my legs out actually I think they had me do one leg at a time and uh, I did gymnastics for seven years so when they told me to put my leg up you know like they wanted it I guess like here I had it here <laughs> And uh, they were just like, no, 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 not that high. And I was just like, my bad, you told me to put my leg up. I don't, I don't, you didn't tell me like a foot or two feet or three feet. You just said put your leg up and hold it there. That's what I was doing. Um, but I was able to hold all four of my limbs out as they needed. And everything was reacting normally. I was able to answer their questions. I wasn't slurring my words. I wasn't getting completely lost in the conversation and not following so they're like okay for the stroke risk we think you're like a zero you know like they, they did not genuinely think i'd had a, a stroke because i like all of the risk indicators i don't know if that's the correct term or not i i was not <laughs> i know english um but then they uh, they were just like okay we're gonna take you to uh, the ct scan because you do have this facial numbness so I went in and I have not had the chance to put my earrings back in I, I want to do that but I don't really have the energy right now <laughs> but I took all of them out I had to take my ring off oh no for the CT scan I did not because the CT scan it was just my face so I, I had to take my glasses off but um they put me in they, they did the, the CT scan. They pulled me out and they were like, okay, we're going to have to inject you with contrast. You're going to feel really, really warm. You're going to feel like you've peed yourself and you're going to have a really gross metallic taste in your mouth. 
And I was like, oh, I've heard about this. You know, I've heard about it from my mom. I've heard about it from DJ. I've heard about it from other people. Like, fun times. And I told her, I was like, ma'am, I actually do need to pee. <laughs> and she was like, I promise you, we've had, you know, 80-year-old women, women in this machine who've said the same thing. It's going to feel like you peed yourself, but I promise you, you will not. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I did not pee myself. <laughs> but, um... So they injected me and yeah, like full body warmth. It was, it was so strange because it was coming from inside of me. I don't know if you've had contrast, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I absolutely felt like I peed myself. And the, the first time they injected the contrast, I was kind of like, peh, peh, peh. like, yeah, that tastes gross. And then they said they had to do it again. And the second time, the worst was the metallic taste. Like it came back with a vengeance. <sighs> and um, it was disgusting. Like literally, I, I, was, I was trying to keep my mouth closed and breathe through my nose. Cause I was like, when I breathe through my mouth, I, I do deep, big breaths. And they told me to try and move as little as possible. And see, I just did it right now. <laughs> like that was me breathing through my mouth. Um, so the second time they injected it, I got this vision in my head of the Pokemon coughing and wheezing, you know, like when they, when they let out their, their poisonous gas, I was just like, I could taste it all in my mouth, that metallic taste. And I just went, and in my mind's eye, obviously this was not real. It was in my mind's eye, it was just purple gas just went everywhere out of my mouth. <laughs> that metallic taste is disgusting. Also, if someone could explain to me how that works, like, so they're injecting it, the contrast into your blood. And I know you have blood in your tongue. So is it just like the reaction of the contrast to the blood in your tongue is what causes it to taste like I, I don't know I'm very interested in that but I haven't googled it because that's not what I'm doing with my life right now <laughs> um okay so they did that and then they put me in my own room within the ER I was across from a lady that was really mean to the nurse I did not like her I know it's, I know it sucks having a bad day, but like, don't be mean to the people taking care of you. Okay. Come on now. Um, anyways, I, I had, I was dying to pee at that point. So they gave me a cup and let's see, at that point I had, I had this IV. I had the, um, what the EKG stickers on and I had... Did I have another thing on? Oh yeah, I had the, the thing on my finger and my armband. And they're like, okay, pee in this cup. And I was like, you put everything like on my right arm and I'm right-handed and I've got all of this junk. Like that was the most difficult time I've ever had peeing in a cup, you guys. <laughs> I did it, but it was really difficult. <laughs> um, I got back to my room and I was there Let's see. Okay, so we got there at like 5.30. I think I had a room by 10, 10.30. They, you know, they, they told me like, we're admitting you. You're getting a room. You're staying at the hospital for however long we have to keep you. And David walked me to my room. He was like, okay, I'm going to get you a bunch of your stuff. Or no, he brought me my stuff when I was still in the ER before I they told me they were going to admit me and it was going to be a while. So David went home, got stuff, came back. I was still in my ER. I was still in the ER. Then I got my own room. Um, let's see. What was the next event? Was it the MRI? The first MRI? I think it was the first MRI. <laughs> um, so I slept there. I woke up. I had an MRI the next day and when people say that that machine is loud, they are not joking. <laughs> so 
they, he had me get onto the machine and he's like, okay, you know, you, you need to scooch back and get your head on the, the contraption or whatever. And so I was scooting back a lot because <laughs> I, I was basically lying down, but it looked like there was like two feet of bed remaining after my legs. So, which makes sense. I'm 5'2". You need to be able to fit someone in this machine that's seven feet, you know? So, um, they got me in it. He put earplugs in my ears and then he put, I think it was just cloth upon cloth upon cloth, just a bunch of, a bunch of padding in between my ears and the machine to keep my head from moving. And I think he even strapped me in a little, you know, of course they asked me a billion times if I was claustrophobic and I was like, no, I should be good. And I'm not claustrophobic, so. <laughs> I have nightmares about being claustrophobic though, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Like, I guess that's just an inherent fear. You know, you don't want to be locked up in some place, but I wasn't freaking out. I was able to open my eyes and I saw the machine you know, three inches from my face. And I wasn't like, <gasps> but I've had nightmares about being locked up in small places like that. I don't know. I'm getting off track. I'm sorry. I'm talking a lot. <sighs> um, so, you know, he told me not to move. I did my best not to. They said I did a good job. I don't know if I actually did or not. I don't know. <laughs> um, they pulled me out, they did the contrast, and that metallic taste was really, really, really bad again. And I did the <laughs> imagining smoke coming out of my mouth. <laughs> um, they pulled me out and they're like, okay, you know, we're, we're gonna send this back, get the results, let you know what's going on. And I was like, oh, okay. They took me back to my room and I think it was the next morning, I saw, I was there for six days, I saw four different neurologists, <laughs> okay? Um, the first one that I saw, she was just like, okay, you have MS. <laughs> okay, she said you have multiple sclerosis, she didn't say MS to start with. And I was just like, I've heard of that before, that's all I've got. And she told me to Google it. I thought that's what doctors did not want you to do. <laughs> um, so she told me a little bit about it. That's when I learned I have a lesion on the brain tissue here and here. And Google it. <laughs> uh, so I, I was Googling it. I. Obviously, the first thing I did was text DJ. I was like, hey, you know, they just told me I have multiple sclerosis. I sent that, and then I opened up my Facebook Messenger with my, my whole family, and I started typing it out when DJ called. And I was like, oh, man, like, I just learned I have this disease, and he wants to talk. I'm going to cry. And I did cry a little. I'm going to cry again. Okay, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> um, so we discussed it a little, and then when we finished, I was able to finish telling my family. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, you know, like, are you okay? What hospital are you at? I got so many visitors at this hospital stay, you guys. It was already exhausting, but it, it meant a lot to have so many people come and see me and check in on me. <laughs> but it was exhausting. Um... So everybody came to see me. I had two more neurologists come in and talk to me about it. The I had the main three that I saw were two ladies and a man. And the ladies immediately were like, you have MS. Like, you just have MS. The guy, it took him, I think it took him three days before he was like, yes, you have MS. Prior to that, he was like, you probably have MS. And looking back, I really appreciate that. Like, whether it, whether it turns out to be false and I actually have something else, I appreciate that he did not immediately jump to that. Because if you were to Google MS, you'll see it is a disease of exclusions. They will not tell you you have MS until they have excluded a bunch of other diseases. 
And when I asked them about that, they were like, oh, we didn't have to exclude anything because between the facial numbness, the lesions on your, your tissues, and, oh, I didn't mention this. I had double vision on, on Monday. I got to the hospital and I was trying to re read the things on the wall and I was like, the, the words, you know, so if you have, these are words, they were like overlapping. I could figure out that it said, these are words, but it was difficult. It was really difficult. If you've ever had double vision, I'm sure you understand. Um, so like, you know, between all of those, it's MS. Like, you know, I, my understanding is there isn't another disease that has all of those presenting. So it's just MS. I don't know. The fun thing is everybody that MS presents in, it presents differently and it affects them differently. So there are some people with MS who cannot walk, they cannot drive, they lose their vision, they have all these other health problems. And there are some people who have one MS flare up and then never again. So fun times over here. <laughs> um, okay. They told me I have MS. I told my family. Oh, and then they're like, okay, we're going to do. So we did, they did a CAT scan the first day of my head. They did an MRI the next day of my head. And then they're like, um, it was, I think it was eight o'clock the next day, 8, 8 p.m. the next day. They're like, okay, tomorrow morning, we're gonna do an MRI of the, I think it was my neck and my upper back. I could be remembering wrong, I'm not sure. I was really tired, okay? Six days. <laughs> um, and I was like, okay, you know, first thing in the morning, I can do that. And then I think it was 9.30, 10 o'clock, they came into my room and I, I was getting ready to go to bed because I was like, you know, you guys keep waking me up every four hours. Like, I am exhausted. <laughs> I need to sleep. And they were like, we can get you into the MRI machine in 10 to 15 minutes. Are you good? And I was like, let's do it. <laughs> you know, the sooner the better, in my opinion. So, let's see. At that point, I had this IV and my nurse told me that the people doing an MRI don't like using IVs in your wrist they like using them in your elbow or higher so that's when she put this one in I think I've already talked about that pretty sure I did this is the first time I've recorded this and I'm pretty sure I talked about it <laughs> um, so I went down there and, and she asked me if I wanted to listen to music. The guy who did my first one did not ask. He just put in the earplugs and put me in. She asked if I wanted music and everybody I spoke to was like, yeah, Liz, get the music. It'll, it's better than, you know, the thum, 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 It's horrible. The sounds of the MRI machine are horrible. And you guys, I looked at her, I looked her in the eye and I was like, have to be honest with you. I dance and I lip sync. I'm worried if you give me music that I'm gonna move. And she was like, I understand. We're just gonna do the earplugs. It's, it's for the better. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, they put me back in. I was in there. I texted DJ, let me see. I think I was in there for like almost two hours. because I, I, I told him okay okay 9 27 p.m. getting my MRI in 10 ish minutes said we should have the results in the morning they put in another IV in case they don't like the wrist one they didn't like this one and then 11 18 p.m. Yep, just got back. The new IV is infiltrated and has to be removed, but the one... Oh, God. I, I, I wrote this horribly. The one in my left wrist worked great, thankfully. 
So from 9.30 to 11, I was in there for almost two hours. They did the MRI of my back. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was my upper back and my middle back. I don't think it was my lower back. But it was the day... Okay, so they were expecting the results that morning after. I did not get it until the morning after that. And that's when they told me, yeah, you've got you've got lesions on, you know, C4 to C7 or whatever. So they're like, yeah, you've got even more lesions. Which my understanding is it backs up the MS thing even more. Um Was that the last actual test I had? I think it was. I think I had my CT scan and I had two MRIs. And the, that second one was a combination of two. Because I, I think at one point they'd asked me if I wanted to do two separate ones or if I wanted to do one long one. And I was like, I'd rather just do one long one. Um, yeah, it's just easier. But yeah, so so I did that, that really long one. And... The thing is really loud, okay? I know I've already mentioned that, but it also moves. So like, you know, you're laying down and I guess I should do it like this. You're laying down, your head is here and it'll do this. It's not constant or anything, but like it'll move a little. And there were a couple times when it like, it jerked me really hard and I was like, oh man, I definitely moved for that, but I couldn't control it. Like that wasn't me moving, that was the machine moving. That's not my fault, right? <laughs> And there were a couple times, so usually, you know, it would have a noise, boom, 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 and it would go for a couple minutes and it would stop, and then two, two to five seconds would pass, and then a new noise would start, dong, 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 and every once in a while they would overlap. At one point, I swear to God, I swear to God, I thought I was playing Frogger, like it sounded like I was playing the Frogger I had on a CD back on my old computer, you know? I was just like, okay, I love Frogger, I'm down with this. <laughs> but then there were also a couple times when it would stop for like 10 seconds. And that's when I was like, oh, it's time, I'm done, they're letting me out. And then a new noise would sound and it would make me jump. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, it's, it's time to leave, but nope, it would continue. So. I hope my my uh, frightened bird self <laughs> didn't mess everything up. I, I got to see some of the MRI results and they look clear to my understanding and everybody said that I did a good job not moving. So I think that's good. <laughs> um, let's see, the MRIs, lesions. My face is still a little numb. Oh, my IVs. I got five days of steroids. My understanding was it was to help with the lesions, you know, like help just like, not necessarily maybe clean them up, but well, I guess clean them up. I don't know. I don't know another term. I don't know. Um, but also to help with my asthma. And I am definitely breathing a lot better now. I probably should have mentioned that before. I'm sorry. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, I have to mention this guy. <laughs> so, DJ came in with Robert, and Robert is the guy who introduced us. And they gave me a bag of stuff, and they're like, here you go. And I open it up, and he's the first freaking thing I see. And my my gut reaction was, I effing hate you guys. <laughs> You're gonna bring Meat Morp into this holy place that is trying to protect me. <laughs> and then, and then I had a minute, and I was like, it's a skeleton. It's a dead Meat Morp. He gets a place of honor in this house now. <laughs> also, if you're watching Holka, I couldn't I couldn't fit the sapphire dragon you gave me, but he's over here. He's on this side. 
So when you come over to visit, you'll be able to see the, the stuffed animal you gave me, I promise. <laughs> so yes, I have a meat morph skeleton now. And I, I guess Robert didn't have time to do it, but he wants to do a fluff. And I was like, he has to have a fluff. Like, you know, the raw thing that DJ does or whatever. Because he's, he's a quail, so he has to have his fluff. <sighs> um, let's see. Um, it's going to be, I think it's two and a half weeks. And yeah, it's going to be about two weeks before I can see a specialist for MS. Or I think it's a specialist. I don't know. It's kind of confusing, confusing how this has all gone down. Uh, but so today is November 6th. I, November 22nd, I'm going to be going in and going to a neurology place and hopefully learning about what my triggers could be, what, uh, what could cause my flare-ups. And we can start discussing potential treatments. So uh, I will do my best to keep you guys updated on that. I'm sorry that this was only a partially happy video. <laughs> I'm doing my best to keep my spirits up. That's what all the nurses were telling me. It was like, you are so positive, you know, and it's it's so nice. You're always so nice. You're always so kind. And I'm, I worked in retail, like, and I feel like, Retail has to be easier than nursing or, you know, like just being in the hospital because people are so nasty. Like, yes, a, a lot of people were really angry with my nurse for screwing up the IV, but like she didn't do it on purpose. And when I got back, she apologized. She took it out. She apologized again. Like it wasn't on purpose. And yes, it hurt. It hurt a lot. But it didn't kill me, you know, like, and even if it had killed me, she didn't do it on purpose. Oh my gosh. Like that, that's just my view, you know, whatever. Um, I don't remember why I was talking about that. People are really mean and they need to stop being mean. I have a positive outlook on life and they were all really happy about it. I got it back. I got it back. <laughs> but yeah, I, everybody's been saying that it's really important to have a positive outlook and I was like I was basically born with asthma like I I know <laughs> I don't know which one of these is worse I mean I guess probably MS is the worst one because obviously my asthma has been under control almost my whole life and now MS <laughs> but um yeah, so I have multiple sclerosis. I said that kind of weird. Sclerosis. Um, I'm supposed to not stress myself out. I, I guess a very common trigger for most people with MS is stress. So I don't know how work is going to go. My work is quite stressful. I know other people I work with don't think it is, but it is, or at least it is for me because I'm a perfectionist. Like I want it to work and I want it to work the first time. I want to get it right the first time. So I worry about it. And now I'm like, okay, you know, I'm just going to have to accept that I'm going to work slower. And I mean, it should still be correct. If I work slower, it's more likely to be correct, right? I don't know. That's my thought. I don't know. Um, yeah, I have to manage my stress levels. I need to get more sun. And I'm supposed to get at least 30 minutes of exercise three times a week. So I, I told DJ, I was like, you're just going to have to start going on walks with me again. Like, we both need to exercise anyways, and I'm specifically supposed to get some sun. And there's a lot of sun in Vegas. <laughs> um, I need to blow my nose again, I apologize. I'm not crying anymore, I just need to blow my nose. So yeah. 
Um, I guess that's kind of it. My hair is... God, I've been talking for 45 minutes. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> uh, Cross-stitching does not stress me out. I will say that now. I, I find it very relaxing. I love doing it, so I'm going to keep it up. Um, I have a lot of Christmas ornaments that I've been working on. You know what? If you've been sticking around this long, I will show you the ones I've finished. So, these ones. These ones are all facing the correct way. <laughs> and now these ones are facing the correct way. And I have this guy as well. I have, let's see, um, one, two, three, four, five-ish, excuse me, five-ish more to go. I think I have like two, <laughs> two for coworkers. And then I wanted to make one for my best friend, her sister, and her mom. So, yeah. Um, I am going to be going back to Four Heavenly Beasts. I just, you know. I, I, I told you guys when I started having that eye twitch and all my other issues. So, I don't know. Maybe my MS has been presenting for a while now. I don't know. Because it wasn't double vision. It was... It was the eye twitch. I don't know, did I even have blurry vision? I don't I, I told them about the eye twitch and they were like, oh yeah, no, like the, the muscle under your eye, that's that's fine. And it went away, so but I don't know, like they it they said it's hard to determine how long a lesion has been around. Um so I could have had it. It could be brand spanking new, the lesions could be a couple months old. So, yeah. Um, I'm supposed to take up like yoga or something, because, like I said before, some people are unable to walk when they have MS because they get weakness in their limbs, especially their legs. I just need my arms to cross stitch, but I would like to walk. I like walking. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remain positive. I'm doing my best. This isn't the end of the world. I'm going to make it through this. I've got it. Mm. I like that I can do this because when I had those IVs in, I was always like, can I, what can I do? <laughs> oh, man. I talked about the steroids. Oh, I did have to have a breathing treatment every, like, six hours. You guys. <laughs> I don't think I've had to have a breathing treatment since I was in middle school. So seventh grade was the last time I had one. And as soon as they handed me the first one and I took in a breath, I was like, oh, my God, I remember this taste. It is just as disgusting as I remember it. <laughs> it's so nasty. It helps you breathe, but it tastes horrible. What? Also, the steroids. They also gave me a taste in my mouth, kind of like the contrast, but it lasted. It would last like two hours or more. Disgusting. <laughs> mm-mm. But, I, oh, I have to complain about it just because I am that kind of person. The first day that they gave me, or the first night that they gave me the steroids, so it was like one or two in the morning. She was at the desk by me, and she had, you know, like, I don't even know how many bottles, six to twelve, and she was putting them in the needle. And she came over to my right side because that's where my IV was. And she started injecting it. And she was like, you know, I'm going to try and do this slowly. Let me know how you're feeling. It hurt so bad. I'm like, okay, 
I, I want to say the infiltrated, that, that hurt worse. But she, I mean, she had to do it manually versus normally the IV, you know, it, it drips and it, it takes like an hour. This one happened in 10, 15 minutes. And I could feel it in my stomach. Like if you've ever gotten motion sickness and not thrown up, that's what it felt like. Like, I feel like if I'd thrown up, I would have felt better, but my body wouldn't let me. It was just my stomach was just in knots and it felt horrible. <laughs> and I told her, I was like, you know, my arm really hurts. And she kept injecting it. And then she took her hand and she kind of started massaging it. And I was like, okay, that hurts. That hurts. And I was like, oh no. Okay. Now it's feeling better. Okay. <laughs> so it, she, she apologized, but she said she had to do it that way. Uh, so I'm, I'm, my understanding is that probably means they got my MRI results of the, the lesions from the first MRI, the ones on my, my head at like one or two in the morning. And they're like, oh, we need to start this steroid treatment right now. She's got lesions, go. And that's what happened. And then the next four steroid IVs I got were, were with the bag and it was, Still disgusting, still a little painful, but so much better. And there was no no stomach motion sickness, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. I'm just jumping all over the place, I'm sorry. I'm probably gonna do that. Like, um, probably gonna jump around a bit, lose my train of thought sometimes. I've, al I've always done that, like that honestly isn't really new for me, uh, <laughs> so whatever, but if, if I ever respond and I, I seem like I've completely misunderstood what you said, please just rewrite it and try again. <laughs> it's not intentional, I promise. <sighs> um, yeah, I'm sorry this video has been so long, I'm sorry that I had so much bad news. It, it, I, I took, what, 10 minutes to discuss the good news and I'm at 52 minutes now. It's a lot of bad news. I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah. Um, do I have anything else I need to talk about? I will get back to Four Heavenly Beasts, hopefully after the, the cross-stitch ornaments, or the Christmas ornaments, whatever. Hopefully when they're all done, I'll be able to go back to that. Or, well, actually, was I going to finish the, um, the Hope, Imagine, all of those things from Bewitching Cross-Stitch by Joan Elliott? I had one more to do, didn't I? I'm asking a camera like the camera's going to answer me. <laughs> I'm insane! Do I have it over here? I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Crap, it's been a while. Especially because by the time I get back to those, I'll have 15-ish cross-stitch Christmas ornaments to post. My bad, my bad. But I, I still have four heavenly beasts right in here. So... He was with me almost all the time. <laughs> yeah. The numbness is still kind of weird. But it does feel better, so I keep jumping around, I'm sorry. When I went in, I told them it was probably like a 4 out of 10 was the numbness. So like if a 0 out of 10 is the left side, feels totally normal, and a 10 out of 10 is fully numb, like you can do surgery on my face and I will not feel it. I was a 4 out of 10. I could always feel it. I'm at a 1 and a half. I was at a 1 yesterday. It could just be that I'm talking a lot and I haven't been talking a lot because I was in the hospital for 6 days. Just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> I did catch a good episode of Columbo it had Will William Shatner in it, and his mustache was one of the most horrific things I've ever seen. 
Um, I watched a lot of Friends. But they kept replaying the same episodes over and over. So I was just like, well, this is kind of lame. Like, I thought the point of Cable was to get new stuff all the time. Especially when you're doing reruns. Like, why, why do I have to watch the same episode of Friends three days in a row? I didn't, by the way. There were enough channels that I just found something else. And DJ, D, DJ, DJ brought me my phone and my iPad. So... I was well taken care of, I promise. Oh, I have high cholesterol. Both of my parents have high cholesterol, so I'm probably going to have to start taking Lip Lipitol? Lipitor? Lipit I'm going to have to take meds for cholesterol. <laughs> Do I have any other updates? I need to just stop. My ring is perfect. My fiance is amazing. I am one of the luckiest people on the planet. And I just happen to have asthma and MS. You know, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, basically what it comes down to is please have patience with me. If, if, you, if any of you have MS or know anything about it, I would, I would definitely like to hear about it. Even though I know it presents differently in everybody, it would still be nice to talk to somebody because, let's see, both of my parents and my boss know someone with MS, but I'm just like, I don't know them. I don't want to reach out to someone just out of the blue like, hey, you know my mom, tell me about your MS. You know, like, that's weird. I'd rather somebody who feels comfortable discussing it bring it up, if that makes any sense. I don't know. My throat's sore. I've been talking too much. I'm sorry. <sighs> so yeah, I I hope you all are doing well. I hope you're doing better than me. As Holka would say, it's been a tricky year. <laughs> but I hope it hasn't been as tricky for everybody else. So uh, here's hoping that 2023 is gonna be better. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at my arm. That looks so bad. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to stop now. The next video... What is going to be my next video? Oh, I think it's officially going to be the Christmas ornaments. I think. Is that where I'm about? I minimized my camera and it, and it, it stopped my recording. My bad can confirm next video we'll start the Christmas ornaments and then I might go back to the the one I have remaining from bewitching cross stitch and then hopefully we'll be back to four heavenly beasts and at this point I don't know if I'm gonna continue my Christmas ornament tradition I don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll see <laughs> yeah like, subscribe, share, comment, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys next video. Hopefully it won't be as emotional as this one. <laughs> no promises though. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I did, I, or at least I don't recall getting emotional in the, the Christmas ornament one. That's not true. I kind of did. I kind of got upset because I didn't want to go back to the Christmas ornaments. <laughs> but it was fake emotional. It's not the same as this. <laughs> I'm going to stop now. <laughs>